This video will discuss Huckel's rule for aromaticity and anti-aromaticity as predicted by the particle in a ring quantum mechanical model system. So we've been taught in organic chemistry courses the following, that whenever you have a cyclic hydrocarbon and it is planar and the number of electrons in the planar pi system is equal to some uh, value which represents 4n plus 2, where n is some integer. So if there are two electrons or six electrons or 10 electrons in the, in the circular pi system, that that's what's called aromatic. And whenever you have a number that is 4n, which would be zero or four or eight electrons in that type of pi system, then that's what's called anti-aromatic and that's very unstable. So aromatic, there's a special stabilization due to being aromatic, and anti-aromatic, there's a special destabilization, and the molecule will try to become non-planar to break that anti-aromaticity. So some examples that we have here, we have benzene, of course, the prototypical aromatic molecule, but also things like uh, cyclopropodiene, sorry, cyclopropenol cation, I believe, uh, cyclopentadienyl anion, and we have uh, cycloheptatrienyl cation. We also have uh, cyclooctatetraene. We have the, for anti aromatic, we have the cyclopentadienyl cation. Uh, cyclobutadiene is anti aromatic as well, as would be the uh, cyclopropenyl anion. There we go, finally got it out. Okay, and the reason that this is the case is we'll see that under the particle in a ring model, if we occupy orbitals based off of how many electrons are in these circular pi systems, which are qualitatively similar to our particle in a ring model system, where our particle is going to stay in the xy plane in a kind of fixed circular orbit there, that whenever we have 4n electrons, we're going to get a half-filled shell and whenever we have 4n plus 2 electrons, we're going to get a completely filled shell. So the stabilization or anti-stabilization comes from having a full or half-full valence shell in, the, in these systems. Okay, so let's look at this from the perspective of the particle in a ring. So we saw that our wave functions there, psi n of phi equals 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the i n phi, where n is some integer whether it's 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc. And the energies are equal to h bar squared n squared over 2 m r squared, where m is the mass of the particle, which would be an electron in this case, and r is the radius of the ring, which would be the distance from the ring centroid to an individual carbon atom in the ring here. So we see that what we have is the ground state will be the only which would be n equals zero, the ground state will be the only state with that particular energy. The ground state at n equals zero is going to have e equals zero. Plus and minus one are going to have the same energy because plus one and squared and minus one squared are the same value. Plus two squared and minus two squared are the same value, etc. all the way up the line. So if we look at what our maximum uh, absolute value of n that we have occupied there is going to be. So if it's zero, we just have n equals zero, and that's one orbital. So we can fit two electrons in there in that shell to completely fill it. If we go up to absolute value of n equals one, then we have zero plus one and minus one. So there are three orbitals, and it's gonna take six electrons to completely fill that highest energy shell. If we go up to absolute value of n equals 2, then we're going to have five orbitals, 0, plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, and 10 electrons. So we can see the general pattern emerging here is that when we're going up to n, there are going to be 2n plus 1 orbitals, needing 4n plus 2 electrons to fill them, thus where the Huckel's rule or the 4n plus 2 rule for aromaticity arises. So we see this pretty clearly for um, this molecule up here. We have two electrons filling up the n equals zero level. For benzene, we're filling up the first two. 
as is the case for all three molecules in that row. For this molecule, we have the two here and the two in the lone pair. So that's four, so we'd be half filling up a shell. For cyclobutadiene, again, four, we'd be half filling up the n equals plus or minus one level. For this one, there's four again. And for our uh, cyclooctatetraene, we have eight. So we had have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Where I've got filled in here is the example for this molecule where I'm half filling up the plus or minus two level. So that's the basis of where aromaticity and anti-aromaticity come from. Of course, these molecules are much more complicated in terms of what actually determines the energy levels of all of their molecular orbitals. But a lot of it is really due to symmetry constraints, which are effectively modeled in this type of a particle in a ring model. And we get the same kind of effect modeled here to, to pretty good qualitative effect uh, for explaining this type of behavior in either aromatic or anti-aromatic planar hydrocarbon systems.